after the boys' club burns down, boys go out and try to win a go kart race to get the money to build a new club. But they end up turning into a co ed boys and girls club. This is a spoiler to a 1994 classic movie. What? Bruh. After, the, after the boys club burns down, the boys go enter a go-kart race, try to win the money to make a new boys club, and then they turn into a go-ed boys and girls club. I, I have no idea. idea. I have nothing. Neither do I. I don't even have like a joke to make or nothing. Nope. Um, that's you, just, you, you, you've got me that's just, just completely too stumped. vague and obscure. I, I, I don't. Yeah. And where you win this round? Um, what I, is it? The main character's name is Alfalfa. Oh, it's the Little Rascals. Hmm. It is the Little Rascals. Dude, it has been like 20 plus years since I've seen it's that. It's been way movie. too long since I, I, I've, I've actually yeah. never seen the movie. I watched the old show. I've never seen the movie. But you know what oh, I damn. have seen? The What the Condor podcast. I, I've, I've, I've heard I've, that I've it's, heard <laughs> it's pretty okay. Yeah, it's, you know, it's all right. You know, sometimes Diet, I, I guess. hate being here, but <laughs> if you don't know us by now, you won't know. Um, we're just gonna get right into uh, what we're gonna talk about today. What are we gonna talk about today? So I, I think know. the first thing we're gonna talk about here is uh, we're gonna actually dive into some sports. Do you, guys sports. Like, do you guys like sports? I like sports. Occasionally. Okay, so the question is most m memorable or just your favorite sports moment of all time? Pref may preferably maybe one that you like saw live or you know you were alive to see oh then i got nothing i don't do stuff <laughs> the Wait, even I, I on like the a television thing. yes i mean i've watched a lot of it on tv i mean that's fine yeah cause... that's what that's what i meant just like something that oh. happened while you were alive <laughs> oh oh, oh so, okay, so not like i misunderstood you I, I thought you said something that that you saw live that's why I was like, oh, well, I got nothing, because I don't do shit. And going to sporting events is way too fucking expensive sometimes. Um, depending, on, depending on who you go see, because, Condor, I know you've got your your little yeah, go, guilty pleasure. I'm going to see a baseball game, because the team sucks. And that but makes yeah, I, I just meant, three. like, something okay, in the last then... 25 years, not Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game. <laughs> okay, you were no, there for that? No, I, I got one. What do we got? Well, uh, I feel like my, my, Navy my might have moment. the same. We might have the same thing. You think so? What is it? Well, let's find out. My favorite sports moment that happened while I was alive was when the Indianapolis Colts beat the Chicago Bears in I think it was like the 2006 2007 Super Bowl. We we actually don't have the same thing, but that's in like my top three. <laughs> and that that's like my favorite because Colts are my favorite team, and. The Bears are like my entire family's favorite team, <laughs> so you know I was the, I was the one guy that was just super happy at the end of it. You know, it, it, you know, everyone was talking shit. You know, Devin Hester brought the fucking opening kickback, yep. and you know I, I felt a little worried, but Peyton pulled through. Then we remembered we have Peyton Manning. Yeah, <laughs> we then remembered. Oh wait, we have Peyton Manning. I remember. I think I was in like third grade when that happened and yeah i'm a colts fan as well and everybody in school was talking shit so i said all right let's make a bet you know we'll bet a dollar on the game if the colts lose i'll give i think i think the way we were sat it was like four desks to an area so i was sat with like three different people and so I was if like, you lost you had to shell out three bucks yeah and if i won i was supposed to get three dollars and then the next day, that following Monday, when the Colts won, they all pussied out. <laughs> yep, sounds about right. But we, we, we didn't shake on it. it, was, it we're oh, not, you we, we can't We can't bet in third grade. Like, shut up. 
You talked all that shit and you lost. Okay, it's a fucking dollar, bro. Give exactly. me my dollar. Exactly. Give me a fucking dollar. Condor. Dollar bills. So, believe it or not, my favorite moment is from the uh, the sheet of ice. I would have never been hockey. Yeah, no, that's a that totally In... blows my mind. Six, what six years, five years ago, twenty seventeen. Uh, Eastern Conference Finals, double overtime, game winner for uh, the Penguins against the, the Ottawa Sen- against the Ottawa Senators. Oh, it Game Sevens important. Shout out to Game Seven. Game Seven YouTube, uh, check it out. And it's not just overtime; they need a second overtime. And I remember overtime. like. I remember I was like, I'm supposed to leave to go to camp. It is after, like, I swear it was after midnight by the time my game was over because why not? I mean, <laughs> on one hand, you're supposed to be going to camp, but on the other hand, the Penguins aren't double <laughs> overtime. Yeah, this shit's happening. Priorities. Exactly. Priorities. I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, you can always just go to camp later. You can't watch the game later, the game will be over. Exactly. And I remember seeing my favorite player of all time, Mr. Chris Coonan, score a goal, and I brought tears to the joy. Okay, Understandable. Dude. Then, uh, I still left for camp. You still <laughs> left for camp up. after midnight? <laughs> yeah. Our drive. Uh, wait, how far, how far of a drive was it? Two hours. Jesus, you woke, <laughs> this motherfucker rolled up to camp at like 2.30 in the morning. What's up, bitches? I'm here. I'm here. Why is no one awake? <laughs> why, why is, is no, no one awake? Is no awake? <laughs> the penguins just won, motherfuckers. Is Get it, up. Why is no one awake? Oh, wait, it's 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> Get up. We're fucking raging. Yeah. It's never too late to celebrate. I mean, nah. It's never too late to celebrate. But all right, Aaron, what's yours? So, as I said earlier, the Colts winning the Super Bowl against the Bears is in my top three. That's probably number three. My favorite sports team of all time is the Chicago Bulls. But unfortunately, the Bulls won their last championship in June of 1998. And I was born in July of 1998. So my biggest accomplishment with the Bulls, being alive and having memories, is uh, Derrick Rose's MVP. But I don't think that's my favorite. The only... Okay. And I'm not a big hockey guy, so... I'm not too huge on the Blackhawks championships. But my favorite okay. sports moment of all time... Comes in October of 2016. After 108 years of being cursed... Chris Bryant, oh. Anthony Rizzo... Javi Baez, and Ben Zobrist bring it home for the Chicago Cubs winning the World Series in 2016. And that's yep. my favorite sports moment. You know, that that's actually my number see. two. That's my number two. It's just because I'm, I'm I'm, more of a football fan than I am a baseball fan. That, that, that shot of Bryant throwing it to Rizzo from third to first for the win... One of the greatest baseball moments of all time. So totally yeah, understandable. And then, like five years later, we decided to trade everybody. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't be know. Bad again. I don't know. Who, I don't know whose decision that was, but someone's getting fucking fired. Someone needs to get fired. Because I mean that. Why would you do that? That is the worst decision you could ever make. In the five years since we've won the World Series, well. It's actually been more like six now, but we have traded everybody and in the process taken our team away from local television and started charging people extra money f- to watch the Cubs for the season on that. Wait, fucking- are you serious? Yeah, that mar- that fucking marquee network. You I have- don't even know what that is. You have it's like it's like a <laughs> subscription service to watch the Cubs. 
The fuck? Yeah, and the Cubs yeah. suck. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Why? You can't watch the Cubs on, like, WGN or anything like that anymore. Can I get a rant in here? You can. Go for it. What? Why in the hell, for every, like, major stream, major sports streaming service, do you not watch your hometown team? Fucking ridiculous. That is annoying. Like, that's the only reason I would want the service. Like... Yeah, I don't understand the whole blackout mm. thing. But if you know, no. you know. There are there are ways around it. If you know, you know. Yep. But I have ways to see what I need to see. As everyone do has ways. Of, everyone has ways of doing things. Everybody knows a guy. Everybody has a something. So shout out to the plugs if you know you know. Yeah. And uh, that's sports. Ooh, go sports. Fucking sports. sports Let's go. I love me some good old sports. Good old sports ball. I do too. You know, it's also somewhat energizing seeing like the worst teams too. Like, I don't know what it is, but I enjoy watching Add teams in sports like Pirates of Baseball, Dude. the Red Wings, and hockey. Fuck the Red Wings, but low key, bad teams with good vibes. Peak sports. <laughs> well, not like bad. Not even bad teams. Like like mid tier teams, even like the 2019 Nets with D'Angelo Russell. Good vibes. They didn't make it past the first round, and they were like a, <laughs> a six. And they were like a six seed or a seven seed. But uh, they're one of my favorite teams. I will say that's one thing that turned me on to the uh, Hurricanes. After every time they'd win, they'd do some type of weird shit to celebrate. Like they did a cunt and dominoes, lightsaber battles. I think they had yeah. Floyd Mayweather well, come out and box somebody. Box. The only reason I <laughs> have any sort of stake in the Carolina Hurricanes. Is because of how much uh, Kofi from Secret Base tweets about him. Kofi really? actually tweets about hockey. Yeah, he's a Canes fan. Oh, so shout out Kofi Yaboa. That's that's my guy. I, I rock with I rock with his stuff. That's your guy for all of your Carolina Hurricane needs. Yeah, pretty much. All types of needs. See, pause, but you know. Um. I mean, Fumble Dimension. Fumble Dimension is, is amazing. If you know, you know. You know, you know. I don't know. <laughs> you should know. I probably should. I probably do know. I just don't remember. If you don't know, you should know. Speaking of things that you should know, everybody our age should know what SpongeBob is, right? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes? And sometimes. It's only the like one of the most memeable things out there. You know, I mean, what, nowadays, yes. You know what goes together with SpongeBob, and sometimes. I'm listening. <laughs> sometimes, SpongeBob <laughs> has original songs within the show, and all the time they're fucking amazing. Yeah, I mean. So we have been tasked over here on the What the Condor podcast. To put together the top five songs from SpongeBob SquarePants, we've each got our own list. We'll go around the table and each give our answers. Like we'll each do five, and then we'll go around, and then we'll do four, and then so on and so forth. Okay. So who wants to get us started? I feel like Connor hey. should. Oh, <laughs> wow! We both threw each other under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I will go first uh, if needed. Before it I mean, I mean Condor, if you really don't want to go first, I mean, I'll go first. You just gotta go next. We we need to stop having this Canadian standoff. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you know what? Whatever. I'll go first. My number five of my top five favorite SpongeBob songs is the Campfire song. 
that was so hard to to have off of my list. But it's probably number six. I love that. I love that song. Oh, well, I, I actually I had a a hard time debating whether I wanted the campfire song or best day ever. I forgot that song was even a thing. I don't think that oh, really yeah. changes my list, but that's Fair still enough. a good song. Yeah, no, so with, with with campfire song at five, I, I would definitely put best day ever at six. Yeah, <sighs> my number sense. five, the campfire song. Bring that because, spot. because oh. who doesn't love to gather around the campfire and sing a campfire song? Our C A M P F I R E S O N G song. Anymore, we might get copyrighted. <laughs> we just might. Congo, go, go before. Remember, they, what's your, before what's on your number five? Uh, uh, number five, I'm gonna take. Uh, this grill is not a home. Okay. Yeah, that song it hits you right in the in the right in the emotions. It right does, in the emotions. Almost, almost, almost more than peak Frank Ocean. Peak Frank Ocean. Yeah. No, that 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 song, that song hit. It do. It hit deep. Where are you on this? Where am I? Yeah. Number five. I have got an absolute slapper. Okay. If you know about the Jellyfish Jam, you know. Really? Okay. That's a five for you. These other four are just better. Okay. At least to me. No, and that that's totally fair. But uh I do wanna say it, it's funny you say that because my number four is the jellyfish jam. Let's go. That I song love the jellyfish slaps. Jam. It does. I mean, jellyfish. bro, every time I hear it, I start vibing just like those fucking jellyfish. Exactly. That's, that That's how you gotta test out some new speakers. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I've I've done it. Get a new car, plug in the aux cord, <laughs> jellyfish Dude, <I've>, jam. <laughs> bro, I, I've, I've rattled the Prius with the jellyfish <laughs> jam. I fucked with the bass and shit. Dude, I rattled the whole thing. Just driving, driving... Just driving around, roll the windows down, turn the volume up, let everybody else hear the jellyfish jam. That's that shit, man. Yeah. Alright, Condor. Um I number four is Gary Come Home. Ooh. Man, you are just going straight for the big sad songs. You really yeah. are, man. Uh, big sad early on. Big sads. Hit. Where well, you don't need them to hit, but they hit. Okay. My number four that. is an all-time classic. It's a little bit of a spin on a classic Twisted Sister song, but all my homies love the Goofy Goober Rock. Oh <laughs> shit! That guitar solo, exquisite. Hmm. I won't lie, I'm, I forgot about that song, and that would definitely change my list. But I've already got it written, the so I'll, I'll keep going. Rock but is Goofy an Goober classic. Oh, dude, love that song. Fucking at mint. What do you got for us, Nate? We're at, what, three now? Number three, yes, we are at number three. My number three, it's been mentioned already, but it's a good song. Hits in the feels. This grill is not a home. Still slaps. It I mean, it, 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 it slaps, slaps in, it's, it slaps in all the feels. It does. Condor, number Since three. we're going up the team and uh, we mentioning songs, Number three, so it happens to be the Jellyfish Jam. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> I th Understandable. It's up there for me. All my homies love the Jellyfish Jam. Facts. I'm right. Nate, 
Where's your number three, sir? Nate, you and I are on the same wavelength here. We see each other's vision. The third Indeed. greatest SpongeBob song is, in fact, This Grill Is Not a Home. Dude, you're right there with me. I feel it. I can see it. I've gotten my heart broken by some ratchet old girl and then turned on This Grill Is Not a Home when I didn't realize that she was ratchet yet. You know, I was still sad about it. Yeah, yeah. But there's another song on this list that I might have played first. But we'll get to that. Okay. What do you got for us at number two? Number two... Is, is I mean... To me, at least, is, is... One of the most iconic songs... That SpongeBob's ever... Ever sang. And it's Now That We're Men. Ooh. Ooh. I didn't yeah. Even think about that one. Mm -mm. That one, it, it's always gonna hold a special place in my heart, just because it's a good song and it's funny as fuck. Hell yeah, it is. Especially looking back and watching it now. It, dude. I mean, it, it, it's, it's so dumb. It's funny. And first of all, I mean, I mean I, I'm mad that. It took this man becoming a man just to change his fucking underwear. <laughs> I mean, that's. Hey, you guys, that's that's, that's just that... fucking disgusting. Condor, don't you even say some disgusting <laughs> shit. Don't no, no, don't get us demonetized somehow. <laughs> uh, he was gonna uh, say uh, their sponsorship. He was gonna say some shit like, "Oh, you guys change your underwear and just no, I'm I'm not looking to hear that right now. I'm not. You guys own underwear." Mine. God damn it. <laughs> Pandor, what's your number two? Say it before My... I smack you. I number time. It's number, time. <laughs> <laughs> number time? Number <laughs> time. You wanna you wanna try that again, buddy? <laughs> no, I, I think this is as good as we're gonna get, but take two. My... <laughs> <laughs> Give us the damn number, Tom! Come on! Fucking number time. <laughs> and number two. two At number time. Is, uh, my number time is, uh, fun. Yes. Oh, the fun song. That's a good song. Fun song. That's like another one. Right there. Right in the honorable mentions. Yeah. Yeah, that one's like probably number seven or eight for me. My number two is probably both of your number ones. Okay. The absolutely iconic Super Bowl appearing song. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bubble Bowl. The Bubble Bowl. Don't get it twisted. They played it at the Super Bowl. Oh, fuck, they did. Forgot about that. Bubble Bowl and Super Bowl appearing iconic anthem. Sweet, sweet, sweet victory. Yep, nope, that's my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Sweet no victory. Bowl. No Boys. fucking sweet victory. I'm, I'm not, no, no suspense. I'm, I'm carrying it up. Nope. Nope. No suspense, nothing. Well, there goes my list. Say, what the fuck is your number one? So, it's Sweet Victory's number sweet two. Sweet Victory's my number two. Wait, 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 wait. Me in the eye. I want to give it, some special fine. shout outs to some honorable it's, mentions. It's best like day ever. The fun song, Best Day Ever, Ripped <laughs> Pants, Campfire Song, Now That We're Men. All absolutely amazing, but you can only go with five. Oh the theme song and my spot at the number oh and also i don't know if any of you guys thought about this but i just thought about it i don't know if we can count it but the crusty crab pizza song it, it counts but i mean i'd, I'd count it yeah <laughs> it's I mean, not my I, number one but it's definitely an honorable what, mention what about striped sweater that's another honorable mention that's a great song there's so many classics there from spongebob are. But for me, 
the number one SpongeBob song of all time. Remember how I was talking about how I put on this grill is not a home, but there was a song that I put on first before that yeah. one? It's Gary Come Home. Hey, come home. My there number one SpongeBob song. I mean, completely understandable. I'm saying that hits in the feels. Yeah, Gary Come Home is a fucking good song. So that that's the list. The list. I'm, I, I have no complaints about any of these lists. I mean, these were all mm. fucking great songs. Let us know your favorite SpongeBob songs, and also let us know which list you vibe with the most over on Twitter at Condor What. And right here, because you know, know we can't be simple and just be at What the Condor. No, nope, it's at Condor What. Mhm. You're trying to say this is my fault. Condor, didn't you make the account? That wasn't the question. Weren't you the one we put in charge of social media? That was a bad idea. <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> yeah, given That's... that I make all the social media <laughs> posts. I mean, I make a post every now and then. It's such a shame what happened to SpongeBob. Like, after the movie, and the creator left. And then he died. Yeah. yeah. No pun. When did uh, SpongeBob jump the shark? Probably like a couple seasons after the first movie. Like they went full on, just like shitty and not too funny. I haven't heard yeah. anything though about the new stuff. Like, cause they're still going. Are they really? the, the only thing that I've heard about the new stuff was all the big controversial stuff. I didn't even con- know there Wait. was controversy. And this SpongeBob controvert what? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. You- yeah, apparently, like the like the people that run SpongeBob now or whatever. Apparently, like they openly admit, like, yeah, SpongeBob's gay. <clears throat> yeah. Is I this think the- I did see something about that. And, like, the creator had said, like, years before that there was no sexuality in Spongebob or something. Yes, and then they turn around like, yeah, no, he's gay. I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, it it is what it is. If they want to make Spongebob gay, let him, you know. I mean, I I don't care. You You know, you do you. But, you know, that's, like, the only piece of Spongebob controversy I really know, because, you know, like you said, the creator originally said, like, you know, yeah, no, there's there's not, nothing sexual about this. It's a fucking sea sponge hanging out with a sea star. You care about that? That, I mean, that was the original idea. But when is he gonna fuck Sandy? <laughs> that's, uh, a, a, that's not a Nickelodeon. Yeah, no. You got you got to look elsewhere, but <laughs> oh, 34. It, it's if you know, you know. Elsewhere? If you know, you know. I you know, you know. don't know, and I don't know if I want to know. Uh, anything oh. could be anything if you want it to be. Yeah. You know what is something? I think this podcast. This, this podcast. podcast is something. It's some. It's definitely something. That new Kendrick Lamar album is also something. I believe it. Oh, yeah? And it's something that I kind of wanted to talk about. Well, by all means. Good old Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. The newest release from Compton, California rapper Kendrick Lamar. After five years since Damn, Kendrick is back. King Kendrick has returned. 1,855 days he was going through something and he came back to tell us about it and this is probably my third favorite Kendrick Lamar album it just served it's a double album there's disc one which is the big steppers and then disc two 
is Mr. Morale, and they both and they just serve as a therapy session for what Kendrick's been going through the last 1,855 days. The first disc, Big Steppers, it's definitely got deep talking points. He talks about his issues with his father on Father Time. He talks about his infidelity with white bitches and uh, his addiction to lust on Worldwide Steppers, which if you know, you know, that beat switch for about 10 seconds, insane, peak music. And of course, there's the extremely toxic, insane, like, fight between a couple that's depicted between Kendrick and actress Taylor Page on the track We Cry Together. If any, if you don't get anything, if you don't take anything away from this album, make sure to take away something from We Cry Together, because that song is unreal. It's basically Kim by Eminem on steroids. Eminem? So, I'll have to give that a listen. Much like real therapy, it takes some time for an actual breakthrough to kind of happen with Kendrick Lamar. The breakthrough is what kicks off the second disc, Mr. Morale. And it comes in the form of the track Crown. Where he, real, he finally realizes that he can't please everybody and he needs to overcome his savior complex that he kind of developed after To Pimp a Butterfly and during like the damn era. He, do, he dives a little further into the whole savior complex on the track savior with his cousin Baby Keem. There's a song called Mother Sober where he dives into sexual abuse in both his and his Whoa. mother's past and how it affect it affected his relationship with his wife Whitney and him cheating on her. It's another Bro, what the fuck? It's this another, is it's this another is a fantastic lot deeper track. Than I expected it to be. It features uh, Beth Gibbons from Portishead. Amazing track. Damn. You're a fake fucking name. He discusses awareness and support for the transgender community by talking about his transgender aunt and his transgender cousin on the track Auntie Diaries. And the whole record ends by him finally being able to overcome this savior complex and choosing himself on the track Mirror. Oh, and? I enjoy this album a lot because it's kind of it's not just a straight follow through story concept like Good Kid Mad City or To Pimp a Butterfly. He picks a track, he talks about an issue, he moves on. Much like he did on Damn, but he does it, I think he does it here a lot better. And I also really like how he lets the influence of his cousin, Baby Keem, musically uh, shine throughout the album on songs like Silent Hill with Kodak Black and N95. I also like how um, Eckhart Tolle makes an appearance on this album. I've read his book, The Power of Now, and it was a nice surprise to hear him on here. But uh, yeah, other than that, no complaints with this Kendrick album. Uh, Kodak Black's appearances on here are good. They've been kind of the topic of controversy because of his past. But uh, he's fine here. There's nothing inherently wrong with Kodak Black being on here. And also on the track Auntie Diaries, he's drawing a bit of controversy because he uses the F slur. Oh. When, uh, when describing how kids at his school used to make fun of him and his aunt, his transgender aunt, by calling him the F slur. Right. So while I don't really like the use of that word, I understand it in the concept of the song, and I, yeah. I and I, I think it, you know, it can be justified for its use. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, from from the sound of this whole thing, it's it's not just music; it's it's one big story. Exactly. It's and it's not just like using it like as a like a I hate as, this F slur. Yeah, it's, it's like, not using it as a derogatory thing. They yeah, they called my uncle this, and this is how we overcame it. But yeah, this Kendrick album is absolutely fantastic. I give it a nine, and it's the album of the year. Fair enough. Album I mean, of the year. Love me some Kendrick Lamar. I mean, I will say, like, like I said, that that's that's a lot deeper than I expected that to go. <laughs> and I mean, like I said before, it sounds like it's one big story, mm -hmm. as opposed to him just. You know, just singing getting a song. on the track and rapping, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I might have to like actually check that out. Like, you know, not even related to the album club or anything. I, I may have to just check that out. Oh myself. yeah, I would definitely recommend Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And the Big Steppers. Yeah, don't forget the Big Steppers. I mean, that's that sounds like the, like a whole last thing. Kendrick's whole discography is just shit like that. It's crazy. And that's why I'm actually going to pick for our What the Condor Album Club. I'm going to go not with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, but I'm going to go with an album from about 10 years ago. His major label debut album, but his actual second album. The first one was independent. I'm going to go with Good Kid, Mad City. Okay. It's got some of Kendrick's biggest hits on here. Um, it's got Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, uh, Mad City, uh, Money Trees is on here, and uh, Swimming Pools is also on here. Those were all pretty big hits that still get uh, you know, a pretty decent amount of uh, rotation to this day. From I think just about... I don't know if they're still playing those songs on the radio. They might still be on, like, hip-hop radio stations. But it's an overall, it's one of the... It's probably the greatest concept album in hip-hop history, in my opinion. And yeah, Kendrick just hasn't missed, so we're gonna go with Good Kid, Mad City. Good okay. Kid, Mad City. Like it. That would be a very interesting album to to listen to. Hey, what do you got? Well, to no one's surprise, I'm going with more Eminem. Mr. Well, fuck that. Ah, it's funny you mention that because we're actually going to be listening to his 2000 album, The Marshall Mathers LP. Ooh, my personal favorite Eminem album. Oh, really? Oh, well then you're really gonna enjoy this. I'm not the big. I'm yeah. I've uh, said before I'm not the biggest Eminem fan, but I can definitely appreciate the Marshall Mathers LP. Experience of Marshall Mathers. Exactly. You're going. You're going to get a dose of Marshall Mathers with these 18 different tracks. 18. And it's like there, there's 18, and the funny thing is, I only know a few of them. Well, I guess more than a few. I probably know around half. Hmm. And the the other half, I'm really excited to listen to because you know, I'm an Eminem fan, but I'm not an Eminem encyclopedia. You know, I don't know every song he's ever made. Uh, you know, I've probably only heard like you know. A quarter, if not less, of all the songs that he's, I mean, you know, made. A man puts out music. A lot yeah. of it. He's put out a yeah. decent amount over, over twenty years. Yeah, he's had a, he's had a very nice career. I think he is gonna be good at it. Do you think he can make a career out of being a rapper? I don't know, man. It's kind of, you know... Early to tell. 
it's a little too early to tell you know eminem is still yeah, a little it's underground a little, little too early to uh to, to see if he's gonna make a career out a career out i mean of that's it. like asking if the beatles are gonna be something like i think it's a little early for that yeah. <laughs> Gotta wait till they're all dead to know if they're gonna speak on something. <laughs> two left, baby, two left. <laughs> Ringo and Paul, baby, come on, let's go. Holy cow, Ringo's gonna, 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 gonna be the last one standing. <laughs> Ringo's gonna be the last one standing, that means I just killed Ringo. Please don't kill Ringo Star. <laughs> <laughs> Protect Ringo at all costs. <laughs> Somebody get him in, in protective custody Let's now. get that um, trending on Twitter. Hashtag protect Ringo. Somebody get oh, Ringo some uh, It's gonna make it sound right? like Condor's coming after him. <laughs> At this point, it's, he basically is with the Condor curse. That has fallen con- on Betty White. Condor, I swear to God. <laughs> I just kill killed Ringo. Ringo. <laughs> Condor, if, if you kill more people, then we're gonna have we're gonna have some problems. I killed Ringo. Probably. How old's Ringo? Eighty. <laughs> <laughs> old man. Oh shit! I killed Ringo. You bastard. Connor, I mean, we need to stop talking about Ringo. Tell me what album you have. <laughs> uh, uh, I decided to go with the uh, band Fifteen Fifty One. Their band. Their album that came out in uh, March of 2022. Their album uh, "From the Brink." Hmm. Okay. Is that one of their newer ones, or? Well, considering it came out in March of 2022, Nana, yes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> to be fair, you talk. I only half listen. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> I, I He's never got a point. I, ne- I never know if I actually have to listen to what you have to say. If if I mention like people's name on this podcast, do I kill them? I mean, I don't know. Sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes you don't. Sometimes, like, just kill their brains. No, you just do that with us and people who dare to listen to this podcast. Yeah. If you listen to this podcast on on regular. Basis. What is your current IQ at, and how far has it dropped since listening? If you listen to this podcast on a regular basis, thank you. I appreciate it. But why? Also, <laughs> why? <laughs> These are the real questions. But why? Are you okay? The answer Do- for that is no. Do we need to talk? How involved was your father in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Has he come back with the milk yet? <laughs> Ouch. I'm, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that just hit someone in the field. Has Uncle James come <laughs> over to play with Mommy yet? <laughs> and now it just got a lot more fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah it did. <sighs> what the fuck? I I don't know. I I, I just you, see too you, many of those things on TikTok. You, Fair you, enough. Destroyed, you came up in here and destroyed my completely wholesome podcast with your uh Shut the fuck <laughs> up. Condor, <laughs> not fifteen minutes I ago. I don't even I don't even want to hear you finish that fucking sentence. You asked both of us if about owning underwear like you don't <laughs> listen four more payments and that pair's mine four more payments <laughs> what do you pay <laughs> 10 cents a month eat dude it, it was 72 months you, you know you know what you know what anyway what fucking pair of underwear do you have one lately <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, not layaway, financing. All right. What underwear are you financing? <laughs> Elvis is used when he died on the toilet? <laughs> You're paying eight um, cents a month for 72 months? I mean, that's not a bad price. Shut the fuck up, Condor. 
you, you know what? Just I, I want you to sit there for a minute, and I want you to just think about what you've just said. You know what, Condor? It's your turn to have your brain broken. Mm -hmm. What kind of underwear do you think Elvis was wearing when he died, taking a shit? But also, I mean, eight cents. Hanes? No. You think so? Shut, shut up, Condor. <laughs> you think Elvis Presley was wearing Hanes? Yeah, they were. They were all the things. Now they're just more common. Anything? No. At eight cents a month over seventy-two months, I'm paying five dollars and seventy-six cents. These goddamn it. Don't care. Look at Mr. The Math fact, and the big stuff over here. The fact that you have to make payments on them <laughs> for a, is what's $6, pissing me off. For a six dollar <laughs> pair of underwear, you want to have six dollars? Dude, are you so, like, dude? <laughs> to to be fair, I don't. Does being your but... place of employment and just like not pay you? Like, like, bro, pay me in t-shirts. Dollars. Pay, pay me in t-shirts and pants. I have to. Uh, bring my own underwear. Oh, turn them into underwear. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to bring my own underwear. Don't even get me started on socks. I'm gonna smack you. I am gonna smack you <laughs> out that fucking window that we don't have. <laughs> I'm gonna become a window. It's impressive. You know. You know what? You do that. Yeah. You. You. you Condor, go over there. And just become a window. Yeah, walk I'll away. Check on you in a f I'll check on you in a few minutes. <laughs> and if Thank I can't well. see into the, uh, what was the name of our OnlyFans strip club? <laughs> I don't fucking uh, remember. It's the, something crystal. Blue, it was blue crystal. Blue crystal. You go over there and become a fucking window. And if I can't see into the blue crystal from your window, I'm kicking your ass. Now, w w with. With Condor over there trying to become a window, let's uh, let's quickly recap for the album club for this season of the What the Condor podcast. We have Good Kid, Mad City. We have the Marshall Mathers LP, and we have From the Brink. Um, guys, I have to cut a hole in the wall to become a window. If you break this fucking studio, <laughs> I am going to cover that hole with you. Well, I... I mean, I think Shut that's up. the point. Shut up. <laughs> Go become a window. I'm not talking to you anymore. Be sure I, I have... we're going to be posting a poll for the album club very soon. And um, next week we'll be announcing the order of uh, the album's that we'll be listening to. I'm gonna start bringing a fucking BB gun to work, just so I can fucking <laughs> shoot you, Condor. <laughs> Every time you say this, I'm just gonna shoot you in the nipple. Um, I've always said album and not album. You're an idiot. Okay. <laughs> so like be sure part. to go to at Condor What on Twitter <laughs> to vote on our poll, and that'll help us decide which album we review first. Indeed. So if you like the one, Kendrick the one that Lamar, gets the... vote for Kendrick Lamar. If you like Eminem, vote for Eminem. If you like, like Condor, don't vote because we don't want to listen to Condor's album. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> and and just like last time, we're gonna do it. The one with the most votes gets reviewed last. And then finale. we'll do a second poll, and whichever one wins that poll goes first. Yes. And we get a scripper pole. No, we don't. And then I smack you with it. <laughs> and then we put it in the blue um, crystal because why would we have one here? Exactly. What are, you trying don't to we... see? what are you trying to see here with a stripper pole? Wait, don't we need the adult math store? I've got Walter White and Jesse running that one. Um. But, uh, Nene, good news. With the two little holes I put on the wall, I can see cockatoos. It's not the blue crystal condor. I'm gonna kick your ass. And and that that doesn't make you a window, so I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's the start. No, no, shut up. Be sure to it, check out I, at Condor I, One on Twitter to see the video of me and Nate jumping condor. 
And Carlos. <laughs> Carlos, you can get in on this too. You can also find it on World <laughs> Star. Hashtag <laughs> what the condor. Hashtag what the condor on fucking World Star Hip Hop. Carlos, you're on my side, right? No. Okay. <sighs> Somebody will be on my, my side. Yeah, it's you. I'm not on my side. Fuck that. That guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to get um, hashtag protect it's Ringo you. and um, um, something else. Hashtag Condor Window t- trending on Twitter. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, if I see hashtag Condor Window <laughs> trending on Twitter, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> if um, I see any tweets with hashtag Condor Window, <laughs> I'm liking and retweeting all posts with hashtag um, Condor Window. So be sure to tweet your thoughts about this newest episode. And use the hashtag Condor Window and the hashtag Protect Ringo, and we'll be going and uh, retweeting some of our favorites on the What the Condor Twitter page. As I'll be back. I'm going to the office shower. Well, while Condor takes a shower, I think I'm we're gonna drown in that shower. <laughs> I think we're what? gonna go ahead and say uh, thank you for listening to this episode of the What the Condor podcast. And also, I'm sorry for you listening to this episode of What the Condor. I am also sorry for your experience. Good or bad. I'm just sorry for it. Because... If you put up with this, thank you. (laughs) Even though it's mostly Condor's fault, I played a part in your experience. So I'm sorry. If you guys have actually listened this far, we need help. Hey guys, the water's wet. So be sure okay, to okay, tune no, in no, next we, week. We, we, we gotta go. I, I'm, I'm about to fucking beat this man's ass. We're, we'll catch us next week. We'll be talking about music. RIP to David Bowie, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>